Let's roll. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Thursday, April 14th, uh, 2022 meeting of the Town North Andover Community Preservation Committee. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by in-person and via remote means. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel 26, or online at www.northandovercam.org. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in the public meeting, please email your questions or comments prior to or during the meeting to dbeckley, that's D-B-E-C-K-L-E-Y, at northandovera.gov. The question or comment will be provided to the committee before the meeting or read during the proceedings if received during or shortly before the meeting. I don't think we've ever gotten one shortly or before the meeting to be read at the time, so, okay. Uh, all right, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I want to run through a handful of things, give a few updates on uh, where we're going through with the town meeting warrant process, um, you know, our presentations to select board, FinCom, John can give us an update from the planning board, um, and we'll kind of tackle these one at a time. So uh, first on our list is project quarterly reports. So in everyone's meeting packet are the quarterly reports we received for the first quarter of 2022. I'm sure you all read them uh, in depth. Um, I took a scan through, and Dan, I did a, a few questions. Um, I guess I'm going to open up to the com committee if anyone has any other specific questions. I do have a few things I want to go through on these. Okay. Um, Dan, can we do, or can we ask to do a couple of things on our financial reports that we get from Lynn? I assume that's what those come from Lynn. Can mm -hmm. we add two columns to those just to have it in one consolidated report? What I'd like to see on that is the date of the last expenditure, and the date of the last quarterly report we have on file. I feel like that would make it kind of a little bit easier for everyone to keep track of who's, who's meeting their reporting obligations and what, re, what projects are maybe stalled. I don't know if you guys have done anything differently in the past on that, but that, no, that's my no, thought. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. If, that's, if that's not too much work um, to accomplish. Yeah, so I, I can add the date of the last quarterly report. Um, those don't typically go to Lynn. Okay. Um, but I can ask for the date of last expenditure. Sometimes those are delayed because some people aren't yeah. as on top of sending their invoices yeah. to I mean, us. The only, and then, you can kind of indirectly get it now as I think about it because each month they list which project something was for. And so, right. you know, but it would be easier to have a date because if it's two years old, you won't know from the current year. Yeah, just a yeah. red flag, right? If something hasn't, yeah. if they spent no money in six months, there may be a very legitimate reason for that. Uh, certainly during COVID mm -hmm. times, and I think that it's, it, it'll probably red flag us to, okay, do we have to have someone come back in and kind of give us an update that maybe is, isn't met with the, the reports? Yep. Okay, great. Um, I did see in the reports, it looks like uh, Project 1326 has been completed. Um, that was uh, the Historical Society building. Uh, I think the note in the report there from Alex Loth was that that has been completed and can be closed out. Yeah, I believe that was I'm not certain, but I, the sense I got was that was completed some time ago, and I was mostly following up with them because we hadn't heard from that project in a while. Great. And so just wanted to verify which ones we could close out. Okay, so everyone's aware that that was a $397,000 allocation. They have $500 left. According to the report, they are closed out. So. Uh, I don't know if someone can make a motion on 1326. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. 1326 is closed out officially. Um, the other question that I had, Dan, actually looks like um, we got a report also on 1371 saying the project can be completed. This is for the Sear Boardwalk. Uh, we allocated in 2020 $14,000. It looks like they actually came in about $10,000 under budget, um, and that project is complete as well. Um, the only question I had, this will get into our further discussion, is if we want to hold back some money for signage on that one. So maybe we probably shouldn't close that one out just yet. 
Yep. So um, I think that one's not also not ready to be closed out for other reasons. They, some of the volunteers use like personal credit cards and stuff, and okay. it basically the accounting department needs like a ton of paperwork to follow the trail of the expenditures and reimbursements okay. for that, and so they have to go back a ways and get some of that. So they okay. haven't charged us for everything they've spent on that one. Got it. Okay, no worries then. We'll leave, uh, we'll leave that one leave that one be. Um, the two other projects, I, I saw quarterly reports in there on the two second burying ground projects, which I guess since the second burying ground has now been transferred to Ridgewood, the original applicant really didn't have any updates. So I guess my question is there's probably about $40,000 that was left in each of those projects, and we probably should have discussed this at the time. That it's we, a slow process. Yeah. Everybody, they work, the people that do the work work infrequently, well not infrequently, but not, uh, there's only a certain window in the spring and the summer that they can work. So right, okay, so I, so I guess- The work gets done slowly. So yeah. has Ridgewood now then assumed those two projects? Is that how? Well, I don't know, I, I can- I don't know, I mean, probably we should just ask John Smolak, I guess, uh, or, or Joe. Uh, yeah, uh, Joe Pond? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, or, or Jim LaFond. Jim LaFond, sorry. Yeah, yeah Joe. Uh, yeah. Joe Pelich. Yeah. Uh, Joe Pelich, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they did submit a quarterly report on the big funding we gave them last year, and that seems to be moving along. Yeah. I guess, or maybe it's worth it to have a, a quick discussion with someone over at Ridgewood just to get an understanding on 1325 and 1356, Dan? I had, yeah, so I actually, I didn't mean to add, I, I took out the reports that were from the Historical Society um, okay. because I, I added them accidentally because they didn't say anything because they're not running the projects anymore. Okay. So I checked in with Ridgewood, um, and they said they haven't really, um, they haven't done anything with the projects since they've been transferred. Okay. Um, as far as the, I didn't speak with um, Mr. Smolak. It was one of their like office admin people. Um, but it sounds like they haven't done anything since they've been transferred. Okay. And there's nothing we need to do on grant agreements for those two projects to make sure that they're with the right people, just belt and suspenders type stuff? I can um, check in on that. Just want to confirm. I, again, I, I don't, I don't want to create a problem where none exists. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So, okay. Um, that's all I had on project quarterly reports, unless anyone has anything else they'd like to bring up. Oh, great. All right. Moving on to uh, the next item on the agenda, uh, signage for past projects. So now that we've got our um, signage, I guess a couple of things in this. We have our signage package that comes along with our application. Um, and the select board did have a, a comment on that. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to share my screen, Dan. do this right. I'm going to totally screw this up. Yeah, look at that. All right, pulled it off. Okay. Um, the one comment I got, I think, from uh, Selectman Valancourt was with regard to the size of the QR code. And I know Rick's not here today because Rick put a lot of work in it. Um, he was a little concerned that the QR code was as large as the town seal. Uh, so I think that's probably something we may want to ask Don Scientech just to give us a, a quick opinion on that, uh, and maybe a quick redesign. I, I thought it was, a, it was a fair comment to make, um, and a, you know, a minor one that we didn't spend a whole lot of time on. Um, but what I was hoping to do with this project signage is Dan went back and actually put together a list of really all of the projects within CPC. Uh, that we've funded, and I think only a couple of which have any existing signage right now. Take the playgrounds out of it, because I think we've already approved signage for playgrounds. Um, I think what I'm, what I'm hoping to do is put together a subcommittee of folks who can maybe run through all these old projects, get their arms around where they stand, and come up with a signage recommendation for that. Um, that would be you know, kind of my goal to kind of because not every project deserves science, not every project warrants it, but some certainly do. 
Um, so I'd like to see if, if, if we can move through a project, get in our, our ideas around what the cost would be, what the scope and what the timing is. But I'm open to any thoughts that anyone has. I, I would volunteer for that okay. subcommittee. Excellent. I mean, I'll help you because I kind of remember most of them. Yeah, know where most of them are. Since the website's not up to date yet, yeah. <laughs> in terms of where we need to be. But how do we fund that? Um, because we ran into this. I remember I brought this up before, and Laurie had told us that we couldn't, because the original project wasn't, um, didn't say in their signage, that we couldn't go back and use the money for the signage. So we couldn't use administrative dollars for signage? Well, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll go talk to Stuart. I'm pretty sure he can use administrative money okay. for it. I mean, yeah. in the cases where there's projects that are still open, particularly land ones, you could probably tag it to the project. But, um, you know, I think the other stuff you could use administrative money. But I'll check Just with, I'll sure. check with I, Stuart. Because that was the I thing, right? Because yeah. I tried to put a sign... Uh, at the uh, hut that we did down at Grogan's hut. Yeah. And they said, no, it wasn't on the original project, so you can't put it in. Uh, we, we funded the playground signage. Right, but I guess right. that was in there. Was that already in there? But it, I don't know. I don't remember it being in there. That time either. we did the one, the one at Grogan's, that sign, that nice sign that's down there. Uh, I don't know where that money came from. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think we sometimes can get it. I know. Get <laughs> I just want to make sure before we no, I'll, I'll check. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah if it's if it's if it's not allowable through, you know, the Community Preservation Act, then that's a different matter. But I, I think, you know, do you yeah. mind talking no, to Stuart? I'll, I'll check with him. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh, John, Jack, thank you guys very much for for volunteering. So Dan's got in in our packet here a pretty comprehensive list of every uh, every project that's out there, along with the Google Map locating it. So. Again, a lot of stuff will be able to kind of zip right through. Certain building ones may be interesting as to whether or not you know, they warrant signage. Yeah, I mean, signage. you run into a little bit of a problem, like something like the library. Would have. Well, exactly, yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, and here at Town Hall, I mean, we, we fund a project right. there. So. And maybe that warrants a little plaque in the inside, you know, yeah. or something like that. Or, but but I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to kind of review and, and make recommendations if you, if you don't mind. I think it'd be great. Um, okay, any other, anything else on... Signage. Any questions on that? Okay. Excellent. Um, next up on our agenda is just uh, input on this year's application process. Um, I wanted to, now that we've kind of gone through it and we've done um, our funding cycle, uh, I wanted to kind of get everyone's thoughts on you know how it went this year um, in general, things that we should be thinking about as we kind of develop our process for next year. Um, you know, obviously we had a very well attended hearing in the winter and we ended up giving out almost the least amount of dollars that we have since, you know, certainly since I've been on the committee. And I, I don't think that the two are linked in any way, but um, we always want to be able to you know, be putting out and, and funding good projects. So I'm, I'm, I'll open it to the floor if anyone has any comments or questions or things that they think we can improve for next year's process. Or if we're doing it all great and uh, that's fine too. I thought it went pretty, pretty smoothly this year. I think yeah. everything was seemed to go okay. So okay. I didn't see any problems. Or I mean, once everybody understands the timeline and we get the word out there, I think it works out okay. Yeah. Okay. I, w I would only say it's worth thinking about community outreach, just different ways of getting the word out there. Community preservations, accepting. You know, proposed proposed projects. Um, I don't have any specific ideas, but I know that as things change and as you know, as our population changes, um, that that's something that we should probably keep fresh. You so. talked once about putting something on the letter that Melissa sends out. I don't know if we ever followed up on that. Uh, I don't. We didn't end up doing it this year, getting it on there. But, but that, I think that would be a good way to cover that. We should be something on the. Uh, we talked about doing on the, on the tax bill. Yeah. Right, getting a little say, hey, just a reminder, this is your CPC dollars, come forward with projects. And, um, so, when do the tax bills go out? Quarterly. Okay. <laughs> so, all of our spouses pay the tax bills? <laughs> <laughs> no, the bank. Yeah, so, so I, I'm just saying. We you know, have one due at the end of this month, I think. A lot of just came up. She right. Just, yeah, yeah, but, and the reason I ask is, is yeah. obviously, what we want to get it. I don't think we want to get it on people's minds now, right? We want to kind of do it maybe towards the end of the summer into the fall when the projects are, when we're just getting ramped up. 
So, you know, I think whatever tax bill is closest to September 1st ish, you know, somewhere around there, we should shoot to try and have something. So, um, you know, I, I think what we probably ought to do on our end is at least come up with some sort of, and I'm happy to take the lead on this, you know, some sort of a little notice, a little flyer, and that we can all agree on by the end before we wrap in June, right, right after town meeting and say, okay, that's what we're going to do. So that Dan and whoever needs to be within the town knows what they have to do and get that out because we will be meeting over the summer. If everyone's good with that, I'm happy to take a. We'll, we'll, Dan, well, let's work together to get the schedule on that so we know which one we're going to shoot for. And we'll come up with a little little design, probably highlights from the last few fiscal years uh, of major projects. And we could probably talk about a, a rough schedule, you know, usually due by early February and, and whatnot. And, you know, we'll have another informational hearing in December like we did this year. So, kind of. When do they set the date for town meeting? Is it? The, it is set to May 17th, well, right? I mean oh, for next year. Oh, for next How year. How early do they do that? I actually have no idea. Yeah. It's, it's October when, they, when the town manager starts putting together the budget okay. plan for the year. Okay, so yeah. that's too early. Yeah. Yeah. But it's usually, I mean, we jig it around a little bit, but it's usually always the set, like the second or third Tuesday of May yeah, or May. something. Yeah. yeah. So we could set a deadline knowing an approximate town yeah. meeting date, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think it's going to change very much. I mean, what's, what's happened over time is that the, uh, the select board and the uh, finance committee wants our stuff earlier. So when we first started, we probably had an extra three weeks, and now it's, it's a little bit earlier. So yeah. it feels to me like we're probably not going to end up changing the date from whatever that Friday is that, that we set it at. Uh, it'll probably stay the same as that, I think. I mean, I don't think it'll change. Right, because we, yeah. we had a robust discussion around that. We don't want to pull our date forward at all and, yeah. and you know, risk less fewer applications. It just puts a little more onus on us. I mean, I think we, we voted March 14th, and we were in the select board like two days later. So yeah. uh, it doesn't give us a, a ton of time. If, we're, if our applications are in early February, right? right? It gives us, gives us Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, obviously, if you had, if we had like 10 really complete projects that we had to vet, it would have been a uh, stress on us. But I mean, to some degree, if you're going to get that many, you, you're probably going to know in advance a little bit, so you can bring the people that are only to get most of the issues cleaned out. Right. But, so I don't think, it, yeah, in the end, I don't think it'll change at all, really, from yeah. what we have now. But to your point, we could probably back into and, and have an idea of, all right, we're likely going to need to have our vote in by X date to be ready for the select board and finance committee's decisions. Um, so we'll, we'll probably probably looking at a very similar schedule. I would assume everything slides a day. So, okay. Um, speaking of town meeting, um, I want to make sure everyone saw uh, the warrant article as drafted. Uh, yeah. John, you've seen it, right? Did they present the article at, at planning yeah. board? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put it up on the screen here. Mm -hmm. There it is. So, following our, our votes, I kind of took the liberty of, of drafting a, a little, slightly more expanded um, uh, you know, Warren article with a little more specificity and everything. And again, there wasn't other than a couple of things. There wasn't anything that was really too controversial in here, but I wanted to make sure that the language was specific as to what we were approving, what the application was, referencing the application. So, there's a lot of a lot more specificity and you know our report that was given to both uh, the select board and, and FinCom will be an addendum to the town meeting warrant so folks will have the opportunity to look through that and, and get a better understanding of what we were looking at when we made our recommendations so um, if everyone's had a chance to look at this and they have any questions that's fine John I know planning board had some concerns about bullet four and, and their recommendations maybe you want to Kind of share that with the committee, and we'll kind of talk about. So what we you went over the all the items, and the planning board recommended favorable action with one provision that on the article, which I'll call the boat ramp article. Uh, the fright, the consensus of the planning board is that we wanted to be sure that it wasn't a boat ramp, that it was a walk-in uh, access to the lake only, because it's. 
the, the planning board is actually, at, well, along with the Conservation Commission, the stewards of the lake, uh, all of the special permits are, have to go through the planning board. Uh, we have also other responsibilities in that area. And it's one of the, you know, the best practices that you do not have uh, ramps uh, where you let people bring their boats in because it will create risk. You want them stored there and you want them walked in. So that was the reason why the, the planning board did not want to see a design for a full boat ramp. They just wanted a walk-in ramp. So okay. that is the one caveat in, in the planning board's comments. Okay. Um, obviously, this has probably been our most discussed application for, for this year, right? I think there was a lot of back and forth, both within our committees and certainly with Mr. Kelly and uh, in, in all of the efforts that he put forth. I know he had at least one, if not more, meetings with both you know, John Borghese and, and the Harbor Master, uh, who I think has expressed most concerns and put those in writing to us, so we reviewed them. Um, what, I, mean, I guess, where does it go from here, if from that perspective? I know the Planning Board has, has you know, said no to this as written. Um, I want to make sure that it's not confusing at town meeting when we go ahead and present this because I think the in, in the nuts and bolts of the actual application which we scaled back the permitting discusses going before planning at least twice in the initial phase and then again you know, right before they get to permitting to go back to the planning board to get that input which I assume that at that point that's the check and balance on why it gets well, built I, right I, I mean there's obviously when you're not actually building anything and you're just designing it, it, it's a little bit different. I think the, the view of the planning board was that we wanted to direct whoever is going to spend the money that the design would only include uh, specifications for a walk-in ramp, not for a full boat ramp. That's the only point. Okay. Uh, and I mean, again, and I, I don't plan to speak for anybody else in this committee right at this point, but you could accommodate that through you know, in a lot of cases, we write conditions for the, the grant agreement and that we agree among ourselves that we will make that a condition. That would be the easiest way to do it rather than to amend the article. So, okay. again, I, you know, I'm, I'm it's my personal opinion, but also I'm conveying what the consent, unanimous consensus in the planning board was. So, okay. So, so when it comes time to the grant agreement that we're. Well, I, it, 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 I, it, I think it would be good to get. At least some discussion of this committee about whether, you know, in fact, that's the objective of this committee, whether this committee believes that's the right thing or that we should design, you know. I think it's, it's better to make a decision among this committee first before we go to town meeting. <coughs> so. I mean, disagree. I mean, actually, I went back and, and rewatched our debate on, on this one, particularly. I think. That was loud and clear, I think, in our discussions. I think Dan, Dan also chimed in about discussions that the applicant had with Peter Boynton about agreeing to a, a walk-in ramp. I mean, Terry, you would the idea of a dock and some of the other challenges that that presents. But um, I think at the time, we saw all, all of that and, and agreed. But I'm happy to put it back out to the floor here in terms of what folks want to do. So, I think it would be helpful during town meeting for the planning board to 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 clarify because uh, I saw how it was written you know it's still a draft but if it's if it's written that the planning board is favorable except for bullet four um, they sh I think they should I think it would be good if they would explain okay we're in favor of a conceptual design but we're we're not open to all designs we're, we're open to specific ones that have worked for us and that we feel we, we could support. So I think this this bullet is for the conceptual design. Uh, and there will be a refining process, including the, the planning board, uh, to make sure we get what we want and that something that the planning board will be happy with. I think it would be best presented that way, because otherwise, you know, why is, the, why is the planning board against it? You know, it, it it could get too much discussion. That's that's really. Well, the only thing I mean, and again, I'm amenable to any reasonable approach on this. But what I would hate to see happen is we go to town meeting, we approve the article with the ambiguity, and the engineers go forward and design a 
full boat ramp, and that's what the design is, when in fact I think the plan would said design it, but limit the scope. So I don't know, you know, again, you know, part of the problem is you can't specify it in an article, potentially the level of detail, but this committee has the power, I believe, to specify the scope and parameters of the project, and that, I think, is the best way to do it. Well, and, but what we do in, in, the, in the articles, we do reference the application, and the application it very specifically says that they will meet with planning in, in the design process. It lays that out in task one, that planning will have a seat at that table, which, to, I mean, that to me, and they've already had you know, some of those meetings with, I guess, the primary um, stakeholder in that instance. So I think they've already demonstrated that, that beneficially. No? Uh, well, I, I mean, if, if in fact, I, I guess it's a simple binary decision, and I'm trying to get some sort of sense of this committee, do you design it with the provision of a boat ramp or not? And is, you know, either, I think, why can't we at least have that conversation here? Oh, I think we absolutely can. no. I think we absolutely can. I, and then that's what we're. I think that's what and we're. And that's a doing, little bit. It, it helps provide some direction and clarity about what we really want here. And so I, I, I mean, yeah. No, no one wants something designed that's never going to get built, right? That was you know we we. Well, I mean, that's we, it. We, but you know, like it or not, part of the problem is momentum builds up. If you design something, then you'll build it, and we could end up with something we don't want, and that will. And that's a little bit why I want to set the expectations right at the beginning. That's all. I'm fine. I'm fine with what John's asking for. I mean, I I think we all heard that if if the town doesn't need it as an emergency boat ramp, and I'm hearing no, and nobody's saying it is, then why why are we even calling it a boat ramp? Let's call it a. Uh, I mean, just to <laughs> just so that you call it a uh, an access ramp and uh, and. And design it accordingly. You know, just say you, it's it's designed to walk into the water and, and, and get into a boat. I mean, uh, not not uh, never a trailer could ever get. You know, if you make it narrow enough, a trailer could never use it. So and then that would be the end of it. Uh, we, I, I think I don't know how to word all that, but I mean, it seems like we could do that, and because th that's what we want. So why would we? I uh, just the fact we're calling it the boat ramp uh, kind of. Yeah, we're, we're, don't we're, call it a boat ramp. Well, yeah, we're calling we're, we're calling you know, re restoration capital improvements to the existing boat boat ramp, existing yeah. boat boat ramp, which is yeah, more just identifying the the, the locus <laughs> than anything else. Boat, boat boat access not to exceed four feet wide, or I don't know what. I don't know that we're I don't even know we're, we're qualified even with that that stipulation yeah. on it, right? Yeah. That's that's the point of the design study right. is to get something that everyone agrees to, and I think that's the, what the process has been. And, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but Mr. Kelly has agreed, and I think you said this at our the time that we voted, Mr. Kelly has agreed to a, a whatever the solution ends up being for a hand carry ramp. Is that not accurate, Dan? Yeah, that is. So after having meetings with the committee, discussions with Peter and Mr. Kelly, uh, DPW and the engineers they plan on contracting sat down and that's the consensus is they're going to look at I think multiple alternatives for hand carry options. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's where the discussion right. so is. If, if, if that's what they're going to do and that's the consensus of this group, that should be the scope. That I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I think the planning group will be fine with that. Okay. Well, we're talking about goal setting for this design effort, and certainly the planning board has a very important part in that goal setting. You know, including the you know the the, the interests that you just mentioned, John. Um, it's 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 the most important part of the project. What what are we trying to hit here? And um, whether it's four feet wide ramp or whatever the parameters are, that's for the design people to do. But the planning board has to be prominent in saying, yeah, th these are the goals we, w this is what we want to promote, this is what we want to prohibit when we design this ramp. And the design people are good at designing right. things yeah, to I meet those. I just want to make sure that when, you know, the 
contract gets let and yeah, the scope is that it says this is the scope and I from what everybody's saying I think we're on board with it so I think the planning board will be okay yeah. and if yeah. everybody is okay with that I'll just go back and I think what we'll do is we'll probably just pocket the objection if you will because it's, it's more a clarification than an objection yeah and, and frankly when, when it comes yeah, to, right. to town meeting I'm, I'm happy to expand upon upon that at the time and, okay. and, and make sure that everyone in town is aware that you know everyone's intention here per lake regulations we got a lot of feedback from everyone i mean i think you know again we asked a lot of peter to, to submit multiple written statements and have meetings and and that's great i think that's what we want to be doing when we get something that maybe is a little bit beyond yeah. our scope so um as long as they're they're clear that we, you know our our goal is not to end up with an industrial boat ramp and having every you know bass fishermen from around new england you know, <laughs> dropping trailers in here uh you know we don't we don't want to create an enforcement problem. No. We, we understand that. So, so okay. Brian, I, 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 initially I was like taken aback a little bit by some of John's comments because of everything you said, the check and balances, and there's, there's a team effort for the planning board to be involved in the design process. But I also too know from experience that when a warrant is absent of language, you know, and to your point, John, sometimes it takes off, it won't, because I think there's enough checks and balances in the system, but you could amend this thing at town meeting, if you want, to basically say, to provide a hand carry boat access only. So something to that effect, you're not, just, you're not telling them how wide, you're not telling them anything other than saying it's hand carry only. Is that limiting them too much? Not, not knowing enough about what could be possible, <laughs> I would fear that that is probably too restrictive. Okay. Right, there could be a very reasonable solution that achieves everyone's goal that's not technically hand carry. And I, I get it. I'm, I'm not a voter. I, I, I'm really not aware of that. Um, so that, that I would be hesitant to all of a sudden put that very hard stop on it that then limits a perfectly reasonable option that everyone would have been on. So is the real rule here saying we can't have trailer access? Can't have trailers, absolutely. And then that, so, is, that so, is the current law. So right. could you not amend the thing to say? Back into it now. Yeah, you no. basically say, okay, instead of saying hand carry access only, basically to exclude any. No design that's, that's incompatible with, with lake regulations. It's, it's, like a, it's like seven to a dozen words you could add to the end of the sentence there. I mean, I don't have a huge issue with that. That way it actually solves, resolves, I think, the planning board's issue. at the pocket. It, I, I mean, I thought initially the planning board didn't want anything to do with it. We're like, well, we'll change the laws altogether relative to access to the lake, you know, but. Um, no, I, I, I think Peter's point that it creates an enforcement problem is, is, is a fair one, yeah. but, you know, to Bill's comment in our last meeting, you know, this can't be, why can't we have nice things, right? We have a boat ramp there, and. It's been a known problem for a while. We need to try and do something about it because um, people are going to still try to use it right now, even in disrepair, and, and probably have a bigger yeah, liability I mean, issue for us. So yeah, I mean, everyone you, agrees that something has to be done. You want to clean up. Yeah. It's a mess. Yeah. I don't think anybody uh, disagrees it's Correct. a mess. It's a yeah. question of what you create in its place. Right. And but I think the, 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 the consensus of this committee, I think, is in line with Peter. I don't, no one's yeah. trying to say, we hear you, Mr. Harbor Master, but we want the boat ramp. I don't. I don't think anyone. I'm not hearing that from anyone in our yeah. in our discussions. So, um, so if, if if this committee wishes to amend, I don't know if we can. We probably can't amend it now. We'd have to amend it at town meeting. Is that, is that, yeah. uh, if if that's the direction the committee wants to take, and someone's put forward a motion, I'm. Hey, what would be nice is the planning board said we agree with that amendment. And then they reversed themselves on that position on item four because it's kind of awkward right now. It, well, us. yeah, it wasn't. I, we, we tried to be careful because we were put it in an awkward position. It was more a clarification than a, you know, yeah. we, we don't want to um, support it. I mean, there, 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 in all the years um, of CPA, there's only been one uh, line item that's ever been voted down in town meeting. So it, everything is, you know, in over 20 years. There's only one thing. And Who is that? I don't want that to happen. Who is that unlucky person? Uh, it was uh, Stevens Corner. Oh. And then they came back the next year to pass. Right. So, right. Um, but, no. but, but I, I mean, I, I would be glad to, you know, 
basically do what Tim said. I just, you know, uh, just get some language and see, and I can run by the planning board. Yeah, just uh, it, that's I would say maybe relay this conversation at your next planning board meeting on this particular topic. And, and again, whether it's in the warrant or how we presented at town meeting, I'm happy to, to to certainly describe the consensus of what everyone's intent is. I do think it's fairly well laid out in the application, which which again we reference in the warrant. So that's yeah. I think it's something to think that says excludes yeah. any boat trailer access might. In compliance with lake regulations. Yeah. Um, and as far as getting it amended, that's relatively easy. Make sure the moderator yeah. knows it's, it's coming. Yeah, and the, the version of it that is. Then, then, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. if, 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 that's what the, if this committee is on board with that, or if you want to wait and kind of table that to, to our next meeting, is there a motion? Because I'd like to, if we're going to amend something even at town meeting, I'd like to have a, a vote on that. Yeah. Committee. I make a motion to amend the, um, that particular section of the warrant to exclude, to basically state specifically to excluding boat trailers. Second. And complying with current and lake regulations. And complying with current lake regulations. Yeah. Well, yeah. John. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. All those so, in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we'll call it unanimous. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, any other discussions on our warrant article? I don't think there's anything else that really probably needs to be discussed on this one. No. So, okay, excellent. So the restriction was added in there, so. Yeah, the historic preservation restriction, yes, absolutely. Good so, um, Number five on our agenda tonight is uh, the Academy Road Center Realty Trust parcel. So there is a, a warrant article, I think it's number eight or nine on the warrant this year uh, for Center Realty Trust to gift uh, that particular uh, parcel to the town. Um, and part of the, the challenge and somewhat, you know, the town manager and town council are working through on that particular item is with the town being the holder of the conservation restriction, you can't also be the owner of the fee because that, you know, you can't restrict yourself. Uh, so you'd need to be, you know, either, either find someone to hold that restriction or extinguish it in another way. So right now the town has been in discussions with uh, Greenbelt about taking on that conservation restriction. I believe they are actually voting on that next week. They've had a meeting on site and they seem to be in favor of taking that. So um, the idea would be for you know, Center Realty Trust for you know, a number of reasons is looking to divest a number of its holdings in around the old center and, and maintain protections of the land. Um, and this parcel in particular has obviously been a, a big uh, topic at our committee uh, since it was initially funded in 2014-15 one of those it was, before was it before that okay um, and this potentially solves the problem with that particular parcel of, of no public access right so right now uh, you've got a parcel that is protected from development and protected for the Vista standpoint uh, but there's no no physical way to access the parcel so that could be um, this could be part of the solution. We haven't been able to get any resolution from, from CRT in previous discussions and having him in here uh, for, for previous meetings. So that's the update as I understand it on that one. John, you guys discussed this at the planning board as well. Um, and there's anything else you wanted yeah, to add? I mean, we just, it was probably the same discussion. There wasn't really sort of too much because I don't think anybody really knew anything about it, but yeah. that's, you're, you're right, that's where it is. Okay. okay. So what would you be able to do with the land? So th there's, there's been discussions, one of the things that um, the town manager presented in her presentation to the select board was, you know, concepts of a park uh, on there um, as a way of, you know, again, gaining some public access. Uh, there are certain challenges to that. You know, the wall is the biggest challenge. First is the biggest challenge to, to a parking lot there, just the topography change. Um, and you know, the existing fence right now is, is, the, is the biggest issue. So uh, coming up with a plan that would, you know, satisfy the historic district and all, but also gain access to the parcel. There are some other restrictions that come along with it that benefit the, the, the property at 140 Academy Road, such as tree trimming and a few other things, mowing of the, of the, of the site that would need to be worked out uh, between the town and CRT and, uh, and the, the, the uh, property owners at 140. Um, but the idea would be to create some sort of a, you know, a pocket park, uh, something that the North Parish Church could use, that you know, historic society could use, since, since they're in close walking distance. Um, you know, there are park grants that are out there that could help fund something like that. 
um, whether it's a, a public garden, who knows what, what could be done there. This, there are some limitations within the restriction, but I think that's something that they want to better understand, but at least get control of it and try and figure out what the next steps are to improve access. So, I do know the, some of the history there is, I think Bob Stevens owned that parcel as well as the house. Correct, yeah. And the, he, the, he gave that to um, Center Realty Trust. I think correct. That's, that's why it's yeah, kind of like part of 140, but not part of 140. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, it's a clearly subdivided parcel, right? Yeah. So it's separate. And then that, but that brings up you know, kind of part of the issue, right? It's, it's not a part of 140, it's, it's, you know, it's a part of public land. When we were, well, Melissa and I and Alex Loth actually were walking the parcel, we actually ran into the, the treasurer from the North Parish Church and said, oh, what are you guys doing? Oh, well, we're kind of looking at this parcel. So, oh, I assume that they owned it. And she points to 140 and kind of looks at it and says, if that's the impression of someone who's there every day, that this is a private property, um, which you know, we paid five hundred and seventy thousand dollars for this for restrictions on this, and I think two other parcels kind of as a package. Um, that's that's a, a concerning issue. Um, so I think that's what this transfer hopes to address uh, in the long run is, is ensuring public access to this parcel. So, but yeah, so it was it was a part of the Stevens did Stevens own you know, Mr. Stevens own the other parcels as well that were tied into this. I don't recall. No, no, no okay. I think they were separate. So it's more center they're, real they're is, not yeah. contiguous with right. that, yeah, but. Right, yeah. and it, it's, it's subdivided. There's a very clear no construction area because at one point it was allowable or, or considered in the restriction to be able to put a parking lot there. As everyone, I think, recalls, it would be at CRT's discretion and, and for any number of reasons that that's not gonna move forward. And I don't know that anyone here necessarily wants that to move forward. That's not necessarily the appropriate option for, for that. But I think gaining access is what everyone's hoping for with that. So who who put together the PowerPoint? Uh, that was town manager put that together. Oh okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I I just nothing big. I just wanted to there was some confusion on my part part. Um, it they were talking about a conservation restriction and um, Prohibited uses and allowed allowed uses, and it looked like there were there was a potential conflict or a little bit of uh, two points sort of conflicted each other uh, in re in regards to mowing of, of the field. Yeah, all and, um, the trees. Yeah, yeah, and and that. So I, I conservation is going to have care and custody uh, as usual, yep. and so um, it, it's probably not a problem now, but. When we write the conservation restriction, and Greenbelt knows this, we just need to be very clear on what's prohibited and what is allowed. Um, yeah, I, and, and, I, and I, I would just eliminate any confusion if at the earliest stage, so that it doesn't go forward. Absolutely, and I, kind of, I put the presentation up here that you're, you're referencing, yeah. and I can, if you'd like, I can, I can flip you a copy of the, the CR on it so you can review it. I, mean, it, I think it, there are some, as the town manager pointed out in her presentation to select board, there are some unique features to this CR that. Please, um, yeah, yeah, could you flip yeah, that to absolutely. me? absolutely, because it, it is a little, a little tricky because there were a lot of different things that were contemplated, right? It was, if CRT elects to build a parking lot, that triggers X, Y, and Z. Uh, on on the parcel, yeah. um, you know, if the trees grow so that they block the view of the steeple from 140, right. Right. they have to be trimmed by the town. If they're not trimmed by the town, then the property owner at 140 has the right to trim them and build back. That's a provision that's really difficult for your municipality to live with. Right? Uh, understood, so, yeah. and, and it's complicated. It, it seemed like the issue that I saw was a lot simpler than that, and it it probably makes sense. It may just have been inartfully worded in, in one of those sections. That's all. But uh, if the town manager's office, it's probably uh, Andrew, right? He's probably the one. Uh, I think Melissa's there. been taking the point on this. Melissa and okay. Suzanne Egan have been taking the point on this. Okay. So I'll I'll yeah. reach out to them if you can. I'll flip you what I have. Yeah. Yep, I'd be happy to. So. Okay. Anything else on this one? Okay. Uh, moving right along, uh, next on our agenda is the approval of the March 10th, 2022 meeting minutes. Um, everyone here was in attendance. Can I get an, a motion? To approve. So moved. I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Can I get a final motion? Move to close meeting. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.